I always thought marrying Emily would bring a simple, happy life. Our relationship was smooth, like a gentle stream, with only the occasional disagreement and a familiar routine. But there was always something lingering at the back of my mind, something I couldn't quite figure out. I often brushed it off as stress or overthinking. Over time, however, small changes in Emily's behavior began to stand out. At first, they were so subtle that I barely noticed. But as they piled up, it became impossible to ignore. In hindsight, the signs were always there, but I didn't put the pieces together until strange things started happening, particularly around our third wedding anniversary. The first clue was Emily's sudden decision to change her hair. She'd never cut it short before, and I loved her long locks. But after a post-Christmas shopping trip with her sisters, she came home with a short, chic haircut that caught me completely off guard. It looked stunning, so much so that I was left speechless. My reaction seemed to unsettle her. Who are you? And what did you do with my wife? I joked, thinking she'd laugh. Instead, she looked uncomfortable, almost guilty, like she was about to bolt out the door. She quickly explained that her sisters, Beth and Laura, had encouraged her to go for it, and she hoped I wasn't upset. Though surprised, I reassured her, You look gorgeous, babe. I love it. But she still seemed unsure. Are you really not mad? She asked nervously. Not at all. You look incredible, I said again, trying to calm her. She smiled at me, but it wasn't her usual bright, confident grin. It was forced and uneasy. I chalked it up to nerves. Maybe she was just worried about such a big change. Later that night, though, things got weirder. It turned out she hadn't just cut the hair on her head. She had made some personal grooming choices as well. Curious, I asked, did you shave? No, I had electrolysis. It's permanent, she replied, a little too casually. Permanent? Isn't that a bit extreme? What if you change your mind? I asked, genuinely surprised. I won't. I feel more attractive now. Don't you think so? It's your body, and yeah, you definitely look sexy, I reassured her, still taken aback. I just thought maybe you'd try shaving first before going all in. Don't you like it? She asked again, clearly fishing for approval. I do. I'm just surprised, that's all, I said with a laugh. That night, we ended up having an amazing time in the bedroom, and later, even in the living room. It was as though her new look had given her a surge of confidence she hadn't had before. The next few days felt off, though. Emily acted differently, almost like a stranger at times. I started wondering if the new haircut meant more to her than I initially realized. By the following Monday, things seemed to settle down, and I kept complimenting her new style. By the end of the week, she finally believed that I genuinely liked it. The next weekend, her sisters came over for a barbecue, and that's when things took another strange turn. Beth and Laura showed up with the exact same haircut Emily had. Just a week earlier, their hair had been as long as Emily's used to be. Now, they were practically identical again. Without their different clothes, it was nearly impossible to tell them apart. Over time, I got better at distinguishing between the sisters, but their similarities were unnerving. Each had her own personality, sure, but their matching hair had been one clear way to tell them apart, and now I'd lost that. There were a few subtle differences, though. Beth and Emily were more reserved, while Laura had a wild streak, often pulling the others into impulsive adventures. Laura was the carefree one, always the first to buy daring outfits and convince her sisters to follow suit. Beth, the brains of the group, had earned her MBA, while Emily and Laura only had bachelor's degrees. Beth had been married for three years by the time I met Emily, while Laura, still single, was adamant that she had no interest in tying the knot anytime soon. She valued her independence and made it clear that marriage wasn't on her radar. The sisters were incredibly close, especially during rough patches. When their parents had issues, they banded together, supporting each other through everything. They often dressed alike, which led to some funny moments growing up, including shared punishments when their parents couldn't tell them apart. Shopping was always a challenge, as stores rarely had three identical outfits in stock. During one barbecue at Beth's place, her husband Mark didn't show up, and I could sense something was off. The sisters seemed worried, but no one would talk about it openly. I figured Beth and Mark were having problems. Mark and I had never really hit it off. He always seemed cold and distant towards me, 
and I never understood why. Beth was private about her marriage, much like Emily and Laura were with their personal lives. While we were eating, Emily went inside to grab something, and Beth followed her. They were gone for almost half an hour, clearly having a private conversation. In the meantime, Laura started flirting with me, nothing new, as she had done it before, even when I was dating Emily. She even tried touching me a little too much. I played along at first, but made sure to keep things light and not let it go too far. When Beth came back, she sat down at the far end of the table and kept giving me strange looks. I figured she was uncomfortable with Laura's behavior, so I quickly backed off. After lunch, Emily seemed a bit distant, probably sensing the tension between Beth and Mark. That night, when we went to bed, Emily clung to me as if trying to hold on to something solid in her world. It was clear Beth's situation was affecting her deeply. The next week passed quietly, and by Saturday, everything felt normal again. Emily was excited to go Christmas shopping with her sisters, and I wasn't surprised when Laura picked her up for the day. I spent my time working on the house, taking advantage of the warm weather to finish some long overdue outdoor projects. Everything seemed calm, for the moment. I headed to the mall to finish some Christmas shopping and noticed Laura's car in the parking lot. Not wanting to bump into Emily or her sisters, I quickly made my exit. Those three could spoil a surprise faster than anyone I knew. I saw them near the food court, clearly shopping together. So I hurried out and decided to check out a different shopping center across town. Feeling pretty clever for dodging them, I wrapped up my shopping and headed home with my gifts ready to go. When I walked in, Emily, Beth, and Laura were in the kitchen, chatting over coffee. Oh, someone's been sneaky. Emily teased, eyeing the bags I carried. What did you get us? It's a secret. You'll just have to wait until Christmas, I replied, moving the bags out of reach. Come on, Jake, Emily grinned. Isn't at least one of those for Beth or Laura? Nope, I said, smiling. I know you three too well. If I tell you, you'll somehow communicate telepathically, and there goes the surprise. Telepathically, huh? Emily laughed. Yeah, I said. You and your sisters are too good at that. If I tell you, they'll know, and I'll be stuck with the reputation of being the worst gift giver again. Not happening this time. You're no fun, Jake. Beth joked. For the first time in weeks, she seemed more relaxed, maybe even happy. I silently hoped that meant things with Mark were improving. Emily seemed a bit more herself too, though still quieter than usual. Laura, of course, couldn't resist flirting like always. Jake, I love what you've done with the porch out front. It looks fantastic, Laura said, a little too enthusiastically. Thanks, I mumbled, glancing quickly at Emily to see her reaction. Just needed a few tools and some time. Well, speaking of tools, Laura winked, leaning in slightly. Maybe you could lend me a hand tomorrow? I've got a few things around the house that need fixing, and I hear you've got just the right equipment. I felt my face flush. Laura was really pushing it. Sorry, Laura, but I think Emily's got a lifetime contract with me. Laura's eyes sparkled mischievously. Emily, can I borrow Jake for just a few hours tomorrow? I promise I'll return him in one piece. Emily smirked, but her response caught me off guard. Sure, Laura. Take him for four hours. Then Beth can use him for another four. That way, by the time he gets home, he'll be too exhausted to bother me. I laughed it off, but something about her tone stuck with me. Was she being serious? I'd never thought I was pestering her for intimacy. Up until now, I'd assumed we were both on the same page about how often we were together. That night, as we settled into bed, I couldn't shake the feeling. I finally asked, So, do you really think I'm bugging you for sex too much? Emily glanced at me, surprised. What? Why would you even think that? Because of what you said earlier, about lending me out. It made me wonder if I'm coming on too strong. She sighed, brushing it off. I was just joking, Jake. Don't read so much into it. You've never joked like that before, I said, feeling unsure. I thought you liked how often we're intimate. If it's too much, just let me know. I don't want you to feel obligated. Emily looked at me seriously, her tone softening. Jake, I love being with you. If anything, I wish we could be together more often but life gets in the way sometimes. Honestly, I was just teasing earlier. Really? I pressed. Because sometimes, 
Jokes can reveal what people actually feel. She shook her head, a hint of frustration in her voice. No, really. Our sex life is fine. I promise. What's actually bothering you? I hesitated, then confessed. I feel like something's going on with Beth and Mark, and I don't like being kept in the dark, especially if it affects us. Emily sighed, looking conflicted. Jake, it's just girl talk. Beth and Mark are having a rough patch, but they'll work it out. Beth's always been private. If it were me or Laura, you'd know everything. She just doesn't want you and Mark getting into it. Her words left me puzzled. Mark and I weren't close, but we'd never had a fight. Why would Beth worry about that? Still, I let it go for the moment, even though it nagged at me. A week passed, and things went back to normal, or so I thought. It wasn't until a seemingly minor incident that I began to realize something was seriously off. One Thursday evening, Emily cut her finger while helping me prep dinner. It was a small cut, nothing major, and we patched it up with a bandage. By the next morning, the cut had already started healing, and she threw on another bandage before heading to work. It was barely worth remembering. That Friday night, her sisters came over for a casual game night. We laughed and joked, but something odd caught my attention. All three of them, Emily, Beth, and Laura, had bandages on the same finger, in the same spot. I made a light-hearted comment about it being a sister thing, but their reactions were strange. They exchanged quick, uneasy glances, and I immediately regretted bringing it up. Later, they stepped away for some private conversations, which I assumed were about Beth's situation with Mark, so I didn't think much of it at first. But that night, while Emily was getting ready for bed, I noticed her bandage was gone, and her finger, the one with the cut, looked perfectly fine, not even a trace of a scab. When she saw me staring, she quickly reapplied the bandage, avoiding my eyes. I told myself I must have been mistaken about which finger had been cut. But the next day, something even stranger happened. Emily removed the bandage in the shower, and this time, the cut was back, but it was in a slightly different spot. A cut that had seemingly healed now looked fresh again. I stayed quiet, but a growing suspicion gnawed at me. Something wasn't adding up. I realized I needed to start paying closer attention. Over the next week, I decided to use the same trick Emily's parents had used when the sisters were kids, one they had used to tell them apart when they dressed alike. I discreetly marked Emily with a small, of permanent marker, right between her shoulder blades where her bra strap would hide it. What I discovered would change everything. I finally found a spot on the bedpost that worked. It took a few tries to get it just right, but once I managed, I noticed the marks lasted through Emily's showers and stayed visible for several days. By Saturday, though, the mark had disappeared, and Emily started acting strange again. This wasn't the first time I had noticed something odd, but now there was no trace of the marker on her body. I decided to try again, this time using a green marker to place the dots in the same spots. The marks stayed for the whole week. Then, on Friday night, they vanished again. That's when I realized the woman in bed with me wasn't the same person from earlier in the week. It became a pattern. I switched to using red ink, and the marks would reappear and then disappear after a few days, sometimes lasting four days, sometimes as long as nine. That's when it hit me. The sisters were rotating, and I had unknowingly been with all three. I was bewildered, wondering if this was some sort of twisted game they were playing. I could never have imagined being in this situation, and I had no idea how to process it. Meanwhile, Beth and Mark's divorce was moving forward but Emily avoided discussing it. I felt torn. I knew I should confront her, but I couldn't be sure which sister I was even speaking to at any given moment. My marriage felt like it was unraveling, but I didn't know how to stop it. Unsure of what to do, I allowed the charade to continue until New Year's, when I finally decided I'd had enough. One Thursday night, as we were getting ready for bed, Emily sensed something was wrong. I was lying there, still in my pajamas, which was unusual since I usually slept without clothes. What's going on, Jake? Why aren't you undressed? She asked, her voice tinged with concern. I stared at her for a moment before responding, I was just wondering who I'm with tonight. She froze, confusion flashing across her face. What do you mean? I mean, I said quietly, I'd like to know which one of you I'm sharing this bed with tonight. Emily, Beth, or Laura? Her face paled. 
and she tried to brush it off. You're not getting anything if you keep talking like this. I don't know where you're getting these ideas about me sharing you with my sisters, but... Emily, stop, I interrupted. Turn around. What? She asked, now clearly unsettled. Turn around, I repeated. Slowly, she did as I asked, and that's when I saw the small black marks on her back. Interesting, I said, my voice calm but sharp. Last week, you had red marks. Now they're black. I bet by tomorrow or Saturday, they'll be green. Her face was a mix of shock and understanding. Then, she blurted out, You've been talking to Mark, haven't you? No, I replied coolly. I figured this out on my own, and I don't like what I've discovered. This could be the end of us, if there was ever really an us at all. She stared at me, unsure of what to say, but I continued. It all started with the haircuts. You used your credit card to get a haircut the day after Thanksgiving, but when I checked the timeline, I found that you got yours on Tuesday. Beth got hers that same day, and Laura's was done on Thursday. I watched her reaction, seeing the realization wash over her. That gave me the strength to keep going. You all use the same salon, so I went and spoke to the hairdresser. She confirmed Emily's card was used on Thursday, but now I know it wasn't my wife I was with that week. She tried to cover for herself. I paid for Laura's haircut. That's all. Maybe, I said, unconvinced. But then there was the cut on your finger. I bandaged it up for you, but the next day, all three of you had bandages in the exact same spot. And the woman who got into bed with me didn't even have a cut under hers. Then the cut changed angles. That's not possible, she muttered, clearly flustered. And the marks? I pressed on. After noticing those inconsistencies, I started marking who I was with. Black, green, red. Each week, a different color. Right now, you're black. Red was last week. Green will come back around next week. She finally stopped denying it. Jake, I love you. I can't explain this by myself. We all need to sit down and talk. I shook my head. I wish I could believe that, but right now, I don't even know who you are. I'm Emily, she insisted, her voice shaky. Oh, really? I said sarcastically. That makes me feel so much better. How will you prove it? She faltered. I can prove it. I married you over three years ago. I was the one who... Her voice trailed off, and I saw the look of defeat on her face. She couldn't prove it. None of them could. And the realization hit me hard. The woman I thought I married might not even be standing in front of me. Feeling the weight of it all, I asked, So, was Laura ever planning to settle down? Emily sighed. No, but it's not what you think. She didn't sleep with all those men. I shook my head feeling betrayed. I need to understand that the woman I married isn't who I thought she was. I don't even know how to tell you apart from your sisters anymore. You three have lied to me, cheated me, and stolen the life I thought I had. Emily's voice broke as she tried to explain. It's not like that, Jake. You weren't deprived of anything. Yes, I was, I said firmly. I was denied the love of the woman I thought I married. How long has this been going on? Emily hesitated before answering, since high school? I stood there, shocked. What do you mean by that? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Emily pleaded, Jake, we all love you. We've loved you from the beginning. Mark knew about this before you came into the picture, but things got messy when we didn't tell you. It wasn't supposed to go this far. Mark knew? I repeated, stunned. Yes, the whole time, she replied. I was speechless, unable to comprehend what she was saying. We need to talk with my sisters, she added urgently. We need to figure this out together. I stared at her, anger bubbling up inside me. I think it's too late for that. I don't even know who I'm talking to anymore. I'm Emily, she insisted, desperation creeping into her voice. You haven't lost me. Please don't say that. My frustration only grew. This isn't how it was supposed to be. Damn it, Mark started this mess. It's all because of him, she muttered, pacing. I felt like my world was collapsing. I deserve the truth, Emily, I said, my voice tight with anger. I figured this out on my own. Mark had nothing to do with it. You figured it out, she asked, surprised. Yes, I replied, recounting the details. The haircuts, the cut finger, 
the marks, all of it confirmed my worst fears. Later, as all three sisters sat across from me in the kitchen, I was overwhelmed. I had been with each of them without knowing. They sat silently, waiting for me to speak. I finally broke the tension. How long has this been going on? Why did you do it? They all started talking at once, their voices blending together in a chaotic mess until the sister in the middle raised her hand to silence them. She looked at me and said, Jake, we never intended to hurt you. This has been our way of life for as long as we can remember. Your whole lives? I asked, dumbfounded. Yes, she confirmed. Since we were kids, we did everything together. Got into trouble, shared everything, even love. I was stunned. But you're triplets. Of course, you experience things at the same time. It's more than that, she continued. We realized early on that we could switch roles to handle life better. I stared at her, trying to grasp what she was saying. What do you mean? Megan would be Laura for a while, and Beth would become Emily. We'd swap roles for days, sometimes even weeks. You're telling me that you've been switching lives for years? I asked, my shock deepening. All three sisters nodded as I tried to process what they were saying. So, you've been pretending to be each other. All this time? Why stop now? Yes, Jake, one of them admitted. We've all been with you, one week at a time. I shook my head, feeling dizzy from the realization. Is that why Mark started having issues? Because he found out about this? They exchanged uneasy glances. Yes, one of them said softly. He knew we loved you before you even entered the picture. At first, he was okay with it. But once you and Emily became serious, he felt betrayed. He smirked at your ignorance, another sister added bitterly. So, Mark knew from the beginning? I asked, still trying to make sense of it all. Yes, before Emily and you started dating, we'd already met you. Switching was natural for us, she replied. Then why did Mark get so upset? I asked, because we all fell in love with you, Jake. The sister in the middle confessed, her voice trembling. I was reeling. I still don't understand. I love Emily. What does this have to do with all of you? Take Emily's hand, one of them said softly. Prove your love for her. I hesitated, unsure of which one was Emily anymore. My hand hovered, but I couldn't bring myself to reach out. Do you see? She whispered. You can't tell which one of us is Emily. They were right. I had no idea who my wife was anymore. So why is Mark angry? What does he care? Because he discovered that we all love you, one of the sisters admitted. We fell for you, and that's what tore everything apart. I couldn't fully wrap my mind around what they were saying. Oh God, one of them muttered. He doesn't understand. We should have expected this, another added. Then, in eerie unison, all three sisters said, Jake, we love you. Hearing those words together sent a shiver down my spine. It finally hit me. All three of them were in love with me. Oh no, I muttered, overwhelmed by the weight of the realization. Why? How did this even happen? I was angry, confused, and devastated all at once. My mind flashed to Laura, how she had dated other men while this was going on. How long would I have unknowingly shared my wife, or their boyfriends, for that matter? They looked guilty, and my question sparked an argument. You didn't listen to me, one sister said sharply. Laura had to keep dating to keep up the charade. Another one fired back. You both pushed this on me. I never wanted any part of this. You enjoyed it too, the third shot back angrily. We agreed Laura had to keep up appearances, one sister argued. You were supposed to keep Mark in line, but letting him know we love Jake ruined everything. You're just as guilty, the other snapped. You spent every third week with him, pretending to be Emily. He's my husband, one of them shouted. I love him. No, the other retorted. He's our husband. We've all shared him this entire time, and we've been careful. Laura barely dated anyone seriously after we realized we all cared about Jake. I met him first. The middle one yelled, her voice shaking. He asked me out first, and I loved him first. No, I loved him first. Another shot back, her voice rising. I'd had enough. Stop it. I yelled, silencing them. 
You're all fighting over one guy when you've been in this together from the start? The room fell silent. One of the sisters whispered, But Jake, we really do love you. I clenched my fists, feeling my anger surge again. I love Emily, I said firmly. She's my wife. But which one of you is she? Every time I tried to address the issue, I was at a loss. They knew it, and so did I. I had no real way of knowing who Emily was. Frustrated, I asked, How many other men have you shared? Five? Ten? Fifty? How long has this been going on? Divorce seemed like the only solution. I imagined a life with a woman who had no sisters, someone who wasn't part of this twisted game. Maybe that would fix everything. My thoughts must have shown on my face because they all looked stunned, as if the weight of my words had hit them at once. Jake, you don't mean that, one of them whispered, her voice trembling. The voice came from the sister on my left. For some reason, her words gave me a sliver of hope for my marriage. The other two remained silent, but the one to my left, Emily, perhaps, spoke again, her voice steady. Jake, it's me. I'm Emily. I turned my attention to the one sitting on my left, but before I could say anything, all three of them spoke at once. Yes, we're Emily. Frustration boiled over. Damn it, I love Emily. I care about Beth and Laura, but I only love Emily. Jake, one of them said softly, if we don't tell you, you'll never be able to tell us apart. We've been doing this for years, and you never noticed. It wasn't a problem before. Why can't you just accept it and not try to change anything? I shook my head, my anger bubbling just beneath the surface. We've got bigger problems than you think. For example, while my legal wife, Emily, was pretending to be Laura, she was sleeping with other men. And she did it knowingly. I wouldn't say knowingly, one of them muttered defensively. It was to protect us. Protect you? I repeated, incredulous. How does lying and deceiving me count as protection? How can you stand there and say that doesn't matter? It was to protect our arrangement, she insisted, her voice growing defensive. We had to keep up appearances. Sure, it wasn't what we wanted, but there wasn't another way. And Laura wasn't as involved with other men as it seemed. If she had stopped dating, or if Beth had left Mark, you would have noticed something was off right away. I stared at them, trying to keep my emotions in check. I was almost certain the one in the middle was Beth. Emily, I believed, was on my left, and Laura was on my right. I couldn't prove it, but something deep down told me that was the case. Do you realize how insane this is? I asked, my voice rising. Spending your lives swapping personalities. How do you even know who's who anymore? You claim to love me, but you've lied, cheated, and played this twisted game behind my back. Was it all just a joke? One of them looked at me confidently. We always know who we are. We've been doing this for so long. It's second nature. We can keep ourselves straight in our minds. We're not crazy. I shook my head in disbelief. Don't expect me to buy that. Everything I've learned today is insane. So what now? Do I start dating other women? Would that feel normal to you? I mean, technically, I wouldn't be cheating. I already have two mistresses. An awkward silence filled the room. My words had struck a chord, and none of them knew how to respond. They exchanged glances, clearly struggling to figure out their next move. Finally, one of them spoke. Jake, it's simple. You're married to Emily, but Beth and Laura run online businesses. We could all move to another city, buy a house in a quiet area, and one of us would go into town for errands while the others stay behind to run things. You won't need anything else. We'll take care of you. You'll have more love than you know what to do with. I felt a growing sense of frustration. And my job? You expect me to just leave everything behind? Yes, she said confidently. You'd love it. We could all be together, living happily ever after. We'll make it work. I could barely contain my disbelief. I like my job, and I like where I live. And now you're talking about living and loving together? This isn't some fairy tale. Well, we could try to think of something else, Laura added. But it would be harder. Beth and I have a growing business. Soon, it'll be big enough for all of us to retire. I stared at them, trying to make sense of everything. Looking at each of them, I realized what I had failed to accept all along. I couldn't tell them apart. Without distinguishing them in my mind, this would never work for me. 
One way or another, I needed to know which one was Emily. Emily, I said quietly, how do you feel about all this? They all went silent. None of them made eye contact, and I could see they weren't ready to let go of their way of life. I needed to know what Emily, the real Emily, thought before I could figure out how I felt. Suddenly, I felt a foot brush against my leg under the table. At first, it was a light touch, gently rubbing up and down my shin. I tensed up, feeling the intensity behind the gesture, as though it was urging me to make a decision. Then, the one on my right began rubbing my other leg, mirroring the same movements. Finally, the sister in the middle slid her foot between my legs. I need space, I said sharply, standing up. You're all asking me to throw out everything I've ever known, everything I've been raised to believe. What you're suggesting is illegal in every state. I need time to think before I make any decisions. They stared at me, wide-eyed, as I continued. I'm going to check into a motel for a few days. You all need to stay here. Especially you, Laura. They didn't argue, but I could see the fear in their faces. I packed enough for a few nights and headed for the door. As I left, all three stood there, watching me anxiously. Please stay. One of them begged softly. You can take the master bedroom. We'll sleep in the others. Please don't leave like this. I need to be away from you all for a while, I said firmly. I'll come back with my decision, but you all need to stay out of trouble. If I find out any of you have been with another man, that's it. One of them opened the door while the other two kissed me on the cheeks. The one at the door hugged me tightly, whispering, Jake, I love you. If you want, we can leave, just the two of us. Anywhere. I can't lose you. I shook my head, torn between anger and sadness. You should have thought about that when we were dating, or when we first got married. Emily, or whoever you really are. She glanced toward the living room through the open door, and I couldn't tell who she was looking at, but it was enough to confirm what I already feared. She wasn't my wife. You see, I can't trust any of you right now. None of you. You've all made a mess bigger than I can handle. I didn't sign up for this. I married one woman, not all three. My raised voice caused the other two to rush to the door. All three of them were crying pleading with me not to leave. But as I got into the car, a strange feeling gripped my chest as if I was being suffocated from the inside out. I drove off, unsure of what my next move would be. A few nights later, I saw Mark at a bar. He looked like he was about to leave when I walked over. If you leave, I'll follow you, I said, my voice cold and tense. I'll follow you to hell, dragging a bucket of water if I have to. We're going to talk, and you're going to answer my questions. Mark sighed heavily, clearly worn out. Just let it go, man. You win. I'm leaving, and I won't say a word about those three ever again. You knew, I said, my anger rising. You knew the whole time, and you didn't tell me? You don't understand, Mark replied, taking a deep breath. When I met Beth, I was the only guy in her life. When I found out what they were doing, I was furious. But eventually, I realized it worked in my favor. So what? I snapped, furious. You're married to one of them, and they're all using you. This is wrong on every level. What? Are they treating us like animals? One male for the whole herd? Mark shook his head. They started it, not me. When I found out, they convinced me I was lucky. Then you showed up. What do I have to do with any of this? Mark took another deep breath, then spoke quietly. Beth fell in love with you, so did Laura. And Emily, well, she's been crazy about you since your first date. I started suspecting something was up when our sex life started to fizzle. Before long, I was getting about the same as a typical married guy. Once, maybe twice a week if I was lucky. But you, you were getting it every night. Several times a night, if I overheard right. Are you telling me, I said, disbelief filling my voice, you knew what they were doing this whole time? Not just to you, but to me too, and you went along with it? Mark shrugged. Look, they're beautiful women. In case you haven't noticed, they're identical triplets. If I had told you, you wouldn't have believed me. And who knows what they would have done to stop me? How could I have known? I replied angrily. I thought I was married to one of them, not all three. I actually believe they loved me. Mark's voice softened. Then you came along. I don't think I ever really understood them. But you, you've won them over completely. 
three wives, three lovers, and now you're walking away from them. His voice cracked, and for the first time, I saw the pain in his eyes. He couldn't finish his sentence. It hit me then. They had pushed him aside for me. They loved me more than they loved him. Or at least that's how it seemed. I was torn, unsure of how to respond. For the first time, I understood why Mark had been so bitter toward me. In his eyes, I had taken whatever emotional connection he had left with Beth, Laura, and Emily. I'm sorry, Mark, I finally said, my voice barely above a whisper. I didn't know. I had no idea. Mark looked at me with weary eyes. If you had known earlier, he asked, would you have left them? I hesitated. Probably not. In the end, they would have convinced me to see things their way. Mark nodded. I realize now that what they felt for me was more like lust. But what they feel for you, that's real love. I see it. Jake. They feel it. Why can't you? I had no response. His argument made sense, painful as it was. Mark sighed and stood up. I'm leaving, he said quietly. Unless, of course, you still want to knock me out. I just watched him disappear into the night. What could I say? As twisted as it was, his logic was flawless. I went back inside the bar and drank more than I had in a long time. By the time I stumbled back to my motel room, I was barely able to walk straight. I tried to think, to make sense of everything, but my mind was clouded. Nothing seemed clear, and a drunk's thoughts are never as rational as they seem at the time. The next morning, I woke up with a brutal hangover and even more confusion about the mess I was in. The following five days were spent in isolation. I avoided everyone I knew. I went to work, then back to the motel, spending my nights drinking and chatting with bartenders, hoping sleep would come easier. It rarely did. One evening, after days of wrestling with my thoughts, I made the call. It was time to face the situation head on. Hello, it's Jake, I said when she answered. We need to talk. I've been thinking about everything this past week, I said, keeping my voice steady. I hope you three have been thinking too. Oh, Jake, please. One of the sisters, probably Emily, answered, her voice full of emotion. Yes, we've been waiting. We'll be here. I'll cook dinner, or we'll all cook dinner. We really need to talk to you. We love you, Jake. I love you. Her words tumbled out, disorganized, filled with tension and despair. It was clear that this conversation wasn't going to be easy. That's exactly what we need to talk about. This whole love thing, I said. I'm not happy with what you three did, but I also know I love one of you more than anything. I'm stuck in a mess I didn't create. I don't know if we can fix it, but we need to talk. We'll have dinner ready. How about 6 p.m. tomorrow night? She asked, her voice shaky but hopeful. 6 p.m. is fine. I'll be there, I replied then hung up before I could say more, feeling almost in tears from hearing the desperation in her voice. I had no idea who I had just spoken to, and it was clear she was just as upset as I was. This was going to be one of the hardest things I'd ever had to do. The next evening, I parked in front of what used to be my home, mustering the courage to face the situation. Everything felt surreal. Inside that house were three women, all looking like the one I had loved, and yet everything had changed. At my first knock, the door opened quickly. Jake, we're so glad you came, they said in unison. All three of them stood there, looking identical, perfectly dressed, not overly sexy but undeniably beautiful. It was clear they had prepared carefully for tonight, but seeing them all standing together, dressed the same. I felt like I was walking into a no-win situation. I don't stand a chance, do I? I muttered. They looked confused. What do you mean? Emily asked. Yeah, what do you mean by that, Jake? Beth added, her eyes wide. We're giving you every chance, and we hope you'll give us the same, Laura said gently. We love you, Jake. Please, let us prove it. I sighed, shaking my head. You're all dressed exactly the same. I can't tell any of you apart, and you know it. We wanted everything to be equal, Emily explained. Whatever happens tonight is important to you. So we thought if we all looked the same, it might make it easier for you to handle. Or, I countered, are you hiding behind the fact that I don't know which of you is which? Frustrated, I turned to leave, feeling like I'd been cornered by a group of conspirators who had no intention of letting go of their lifestyle. Suddenly, 
One of them grabbed me and dragged me back inside. I heard the door slam behind me, followed by the click of the lock. Okay, Jake, Emily said softly. We'll do it your way. Without warning, one of them began to undress, and the others followed suit. Soon, all three were standing in front of me, naked. They turned around, showing their backs, and there they were, red, black, and green. The same marks I had once made. Dots, shining bright, were marked between their shoulder blades. Next to each dot, a name was written in the same color. Emily, I pointed. Laura, Beth. I paused, confused. Wait, I thought green was Emily's? We lied, Emily admitted. We didn't know how upset you'd be. Now, the names are correct, and so are the colors. If things work out the way we hope, we'll always keep our colors. Whether unclothed or in our clothes, these colors will be the dividing factor, Laura added. I shook my head in disbelief. You've lied about everything before, I muttered. How can I trust you to stand by this now? How can I believe this is real? These aren't just marks, Jake, Beth said softly. They're tattoos. We finished getting them done on Monday morning. They can't be washed away, erased, or disappear. They're permanent. We knew you needed something to distinguish us from each other in a way that's permanent. I blinked, still trying to process. Names? No, just dots. If you look closer, we each have another mark between our shoulder blades, and we also have a tattoo on the front, right by our belly buttons, Laura said. Do you see? I glanced down at their bellies and saw what looked like flowers near their belly buttons, each one in a different color. They were delicate but clear, like an unmistakable symbol. There was no black flower, only red, green, and blue. Now you know which of us is which. Emily said softly. There's no more deception. Just us. I took a deep breath, telling myself it was time to make a move. Let's go to the kitchen and talk, I said, feeling like I was stepping into completely unknown territory. Once in the kitchen, I took Emily's hand and pulled her close. I held her tightly, feeling her warmth against me. It was clear this upset her sisters. Why are you holding Emily close to you, Jake? Beth asked. Because she's my wife, I said firmly. I thought I was married to her all this time. But we thought you were going to settle something between the three of us, Laura added, her voice filled with confusion. I am, I nodded. I'm going to force you three to become individuals. If you don't, I'll divorce Emily and move on. I know all three of you love me, and I know you think this can somehow work. But the truth is, I'm not ready for this. I really don't know, I said struggling to find the right words. I've always been a one-woman man, and all this confusion has driven me insane. But what about Beth and me? Laura asked, her voice breaking. We love you just as much as Emily does. Don't we deserve a chance with you two? We can share. You'll only be with us from now on. We'll do anything to prove it to you. I don't need your proof, I said coldly. I want Emily. I tried telling you last night, but you didn't listen. I love Emily, and I want her. I care about both of you, but not like I love her. I saw the pain and hurt flash across Beth and Laura's faces. Emily held my hand tightly, and I could feel my heart racing. I had spent the entire week thinking about this, and I realized that if we all moved in together, it wouldn't take long before we were discovered. Legal and moral issues would be all over the news, just like that Mormon guy who got into trouble recently. I can't do it, I said my voice cracking. We want you, Jake, Emily whispered, her voice trembling. We all want you, and we'll fight to keep you. What about what I want? I snapped. You all claim to love me so much, but what about what I can handle? Don't you see that you're pushing your will onto me without giving me a choice? They exchanged looks, guilt, and sadness evident on their faces. Deep down, they knew that what they wanted wasn't what I wanted. Despite my own fears and confusion, I knew that the only way forward was with one wife, just one. None of you understand how I feel about this, I continued. I thought I was happily married to Emily. I believed she was faithful and that she loved only me. Now, I find out that she's been all of you. I found out that while we were married, she, you, slept with other men. And as much as you think that what I didn't know wouldn't hurt me, it does. It hurts more than you can imagine. 
I felt Emily's grip on my arm loosen as she began to pull away. There was fear in her eyes, mixed with pain. I rarely cursed in front of them, but the betrayal weighed heavily on me. I pulled Emily back toward me, holding her tightly. I need you all to understand something, I said, my voice steady. I can only love one woman. Anything else feels like cheating, even if the other two agree. Don't you see? If we try to do this your way, I'll be lost to all of you. If you hadn't found out, everything would have been fine, Beth protested. You've been with each of us in turn since you got married, and you never seemed to mind before. You're right about that, I admitted. But just because someone doesn't know they're being cheated on doesn't make it okay. As soon as they find out, it hurts all the same. And it's never right. But we all love you, Laura insisted. We all want you to be our man. Only Emily can have me, I said firmly. Beth and Laura, you need to find your own soulmates. You need your own men. Emily can have me, if she wants. But that doesn't mean we'll work out, not after this mess. I'm willing to try and make things right between us, but only if you can all be faithful, to yourselves and to me. Tears started to form in all their eyes. I could see the pain I had caused, but I also knew this was the only way forward. This means, I continued, that you, Beth and Laura, need to find your own partners. No more switching or pretending. Emily, you'll need to be faithful to me, just like I've always been faithful to you in my heart. Sobs filled the room and I knew I had hurt them deeply. I wasn't sure if Emily would stay with me after this. Their bond might be too strong for them to accept that I would only be with one of them, but I hoped, at least, that they would respect my decision. The alternative would only cause more pain. I'm ready to divorce Emily and move on with my life. No matter what, I thought to myself. I didn't know if Emily and I could truly fix things, but I still loved her despite everything. She deserved one chance to be the wife I believed she could be. I'm going to leave now, I said, standing up. You can all think about it, and let me know what you decide later. I need some more time alone, and you all need to figure out what you want. I drove back to the motel, and sat in the dark for a long time. I had been wrestling with this decision for days. I hoped that the offer I made would be the best way forward for all of us. If they couldn't accept it, I was ready to leave. I didn't want to divorce Emily but if they couldn't agree to my terms, I would have no choice. I had always been, and always would be, a one-woman man. Later that night, there was a knock on my door. When I opened it, Emily was standing there, looking haunted. Her eyes were swollen and red from crying. Come in, I said softly. Jake, how did you know it was me? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. Your color, I replied, realizing I had forgotten about the marks. Oh, right? I stepped aside, letting her in. She looked so broken, and I could feel the tension hanging between us. What do you want to talk about? I asked. About us, she answered, her voice trembling. I nodded, trying to stay calm. I hadn't expected her to come tonight. In fact, I hadn't expected any of them to show up. I had assumed they wouldn't be able to break away from the lives they lived since childhood. Take a seat, I said gently. Would you like something to drink? I have soda or bottled water, I said, trying to keep the mood light. Water would be nice, Emily said quietly. I grabbed a bottle of water and sat down at the small table opposite her. She looked around the room, avoiding eye contact, and the silence hung heavily between us. Finally, I decided to break it. Okay, Emily, you came here for a reason. You must have tracked me down for something important. What do you want to say? We talked about everything. All of us, she began. Beth and Laura are hurt deeper than you can imagine, but they both agreed that I deserve to be with you. If you take me back, I'll be your wife and nothing more. Just your wife. No more switching, no more lies, no more hiding the truth. I nodded. Okay, but that's not all, is it? No, she admitted. Beth and Laura know we hurt you more than we realized. We never understood how you felt. We always thought you'd be over the moon if you knew you had all of us. Now we know we were wrong, terribly wrong. We've probably ruined some of your love for us. I say us because, until recently, you were in love with all three of us. Don't say you weren't, because you were. You treated each of us the same. You still don't understand, do you? I asked, shaking my head. 
I treated you all the same because I thought I was dealing with my wife, the one person I loved with all my heart. I never knew the truth. If I had known, things would have been different. Don't think they wouldn't have been. In my mind, I don't love you all the same. Even if you played different games and got away with it, I was always with Emily in my mind. She nodded, her eyes brimming with tears. I know that now. We know that now. We didn't see it then, but after everything that's happened, we understand. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Jake. I want to love you, and I want you to love me. Beth and Laura wanted the same, but they realized they have to find their own men. I sighed, feeling a wave of relief, and nodded. So, no more switching? Never again, Emily promised. It won't be easy for us, but we know we were wrong. This has been a painful lesson, and we realize how badly we messed up. Mom and Dad would be shocked if they knew how far things went. You don't have to tell them, I said quickly. Let it go. The only people who know the full story are you three, Mark, and me. Let your parents think you're the good girls they believe you are. I won't say anything, and I'm sure Mark won't either. Oh, we thought you might want us to tell everyone, to show how we've changed, Emily said, her eyes wide with surprise. Hell no. I exclaimed, shaking my head. First of all, it would put you three, your family, and me in an awkward position. Just forget about it, and we'll move on with our lives, just the two of us. Beth and Laura can find their own men, and soon, we can be one big happy family again without dragging everyone else into this mess. Let's figure it out ourselves, okay? Really? Emily asked, her voice trembling with relief. You'd be okay if only the four of us know what happened? My lips are sealed, Emily, I promised. This will stay between us. Her face lit up, and she rushed over, hugging me tightly and kissing me. I pulled back my chair and sat her on my lap, holding her close. We kissed long and hard, and I could feel the tension between us starting to fade. Uh, Jake, do you think you could help me out here? She asked with a mischievous grin. It's been a long time since we've been together. I don't want to pressure you or anything, but I'm completely on edge right now. I smiled, feeling the tension lift a little. I had been on edge too, and it seemed like things were finally getting better. I gave in, letting her have some fun. Later that night, after some much-needed intimacy, Emily looked into my eyes, a spark of mischief dancing in her gaze. What? I asked, curious. I was just thinking, she said, smiling slyly. You know Beth and Laura are going to be looking for their own men now, right? Yes, I replied cautiously. Well, she continued. In the meantime, they'll get excited. I was wondering, do you think you could help them out from time to time? You know, just until they find their own men to love? Emily, I exclaimed, shocked. I'm kidding, she said laughing. Just kidding. Can't you take a joke? Crap, I muttered, shaking my head. I know you wouldn't do this on purpose, but you better not try that in the future. If you know what I mean. You won't do it, she assured me, still smiling. From now on, you're stuck with me. And you understand, of course, that our, uh, sex life might slow down a bit. I mean, you'll get tired of just me. Oh, I don't think I'll be the one slowing down, I replied with a grin. You won't get the breaks you used to, and you'll have to deal with me constantly pestering you for sex, I bet. Yes, she whispered. Oh yes, I can live with that. I looked at her, hoping everything would be fine between us. I loved this woman deeply, despite everything we'd been through. When I first confronted Emily about the deception with her sisters, I still believed we could fix things. I wanted to believe that the woman I married, the woman I loved, could move past the lies and betrayals. But the truth was far worse than I had imagined. Emily hadn't just been sharing me with her sisters. She had been part of a lifelong game. A game they had played together for years. I was nothing but a pawn in their twisted game. The more I thought about it, the deeper the betrayal sank into my bones. How many nights had I been with Laura or Beth, thinking it was Emily? How many moments of intimacy were nothing but a lie? Every touch, every whispered word of love. It was all built on deception. The anger simmered inside me growing stronger with each new realization. Every time I looked at Emily, all I saw was betrayal, not just from her but from her entire family.
They were all part of this sick arrangement. I had been trapped in a marriage with three women, none of whom respected me enough to be honest. Divorce was the only way out. I couldn't fake it anymore. I couldn't look at Emily without feeling disgusted. I had been manipulated, deceived, and I knew I had to take control of my life again. Filing for divorce felt like the only way to escape the web they'd spun around me. The divorce was a war. Emily fought me every step of the way, claiming she still loved me, insisting she could make it right. But love? How could she even say that? She had allowed her sisters to sleep with me, impersonating her, lying to my face for years. That wasn't love. That was the deepest form of betrayal. I made sure every lie, every deception, came out in court. I wasn't about to let her off easy. I hired the toughest lawyer I could find. I wanted the world to know what they had done to me. I wasn't going to be the victim anymore. I wanted justice. The looks on their faces when the truth spilled out, when they realized I wasn't backing down, was the only satisfaction I got. I wanted Emily, Beth, and Laura to feel the humiliation. The same humiliation I had felt for years. I went after everything. The house, the cars, the money. I didn't care anymore. I wanted her to suffer. I wanted her to know that she had destroyed the very thing she claimed to value, our marriage. But in the end, it wasn't just about revenge. It was about walking away from the lies and the chaos they had created. I needed a clean break, and I made sure I got it. After the divorce, I didn't expect to think about Beth. Of the three sisters, she had hurt me the least. Laura had always been the wild one, constantly pushing the boundaries, always flirting. But Beth had been different. She was quieter, more reserved. It was as though she had never really wanted to play the game, but she'd been dragged into it by her sisters. The more I thought about it, the more I realized she had always been the odd one out. We started talking, Beth and I. At first, it was awkward. How could it not be? I still saw her as part of the betrayal. She knew that, and it made her hesitant. But as we talked, I began to see things differently. Beth wasn't like the others. She had been just as trapped as I was, trying to keep the bond with her sisters intact. One night, after too many drinks, she broke down. She told me everything. How she had loved me for years but was too afraid to say anything. How she had been swept along by Emily and Laura's manipulations. Her tears were real, and for the first time, I saw her pain. That night, something shifted inside me. I realized Beth wasn't just another player in their twisted game. She had been suffering too, forced to play a role she never wanted. It took me by surprise, but I felt something for her. Empathy. Maybe even hope. For the first time since the divorce, I saw a future that wasn't clouded by anger. We didn't rush things. I couldn't. After everything that had happened, I wasn't ready to jump back into a relationship. But the more time I spent with Beth, the more I realized she was the one I should have been with all along. She wasn't like her sisters. Beth was thoughtful, kind, and most importantly, honest. There were no secrets between us. No more games. What I saw with Beth was what I got, and after years of lies, that was exactly what I needed. We fell in love, but it wasn't the whirlwind romance I had with Emily. With Beth, it was slower, more meaningful. It was about trust, about rebuilding something real from the ruins of our past. We took trips together, shared quiet moments that felt more intimate than anything I had ever experienced in my marriage. Beth had a depth to her that Emily and Laura never had. She didn't care about the superficial things her sisters had always focused on. She wanted something genuine, something lasting. Eventually, I asked Beth to marry me. There was no grand gesture, no big proposal. It was simple, personal, and deeply meaningful. We had been through hell together, and I knew that if we could survive that, we could survive anything. When she said yes, it felt like the first real step toward a future I could believe in. Marrying Beth was the best decision I ever made. It wasn't just about finding love again. It was about finding peace. With Beth, I didn't have to worry about who was lying or what games were being played. She was honest, and our life together was exactly what I had always wanted. Simple, quiet, and real. Emily and Laura tried to reach out a few times after the wedding, but I kept my distance. I had no interest in revisiting that chapter of my life. Beth had cut ties with them too realizing that the only way we could truly move forward was to leave the past behind. 
We built a new life together, one based on trust, respect, and the love that grew naturally between us. Looking back, I realized the revenge I had craved after the divorce didn't give me the peace I thought it would. What truly healed me was finding real love again. Beth was that love, someone who valued me for who I was, not as a part of some twisted game. Together, we moved on from the lies, and we built a future far better than anything I could have imagined with Emily.